My name is Kellen Cooks. I'm a fourth year in the Urban and Regional Studies program um, at Cornell University. So my undergraduate research project is called Dreaming on Hudson, the Politics and Power of Speculation in the Hudson Valley. Hey, everyone. Hi, everyone. Can you all welcome Kellen? He's here. Welcome. And the core of that project is what we're doing here with um, Ms. McRae and Mr. North. Hi, I'm Sam North. Uh, I also teach at Austin High School. I am Joyce Sherrock Cole, the Austin Village Historian. I am a lifelong resident of Austin. Can I ask you a question? Do their post-it notes like go on? I'm Jillian McCray. I am an English teacher. I've been teaching at Austin High School for 21 years. Just a quick reminder that you had a reading that was due. I am currently teaching a SUNY Racism, Classism, and Sexism course through the University at Albany. So I grew up in Austin my entire life. I took SUNY Race uh, when I was in my senior year of high school, and it was truly the most impactful class that I took um, in Austin High School. Even through to this day, I think back on conversations we had in SUNY Race and, pra and different practices and projects we did in class, like the redlining map that we drew. And that was one of the key influences to thinking about mapping as a medium for teaching and learning and dreaming about community and dreaming about place. Maps to me are really everything and they're the way that I kind of walk through life. Or they're the way that I can at least understand what I'm doing or place myself at any moment. Mapping is also a way to like understand the unknown. The metaphor I use in class is growing up in a glass of milk. I think Austin has always been, I, what I say to students is it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, you, you definitely had different types of exposure, mm -hmm. but once we pick a little bit and kind of go underneath the surface, yeah. Yeah. what is happening, what are the systems that are at play? And then draw their lines and connect and then keep going and going. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Alright, get on that wall. Don't be scared. For me, I feel like mapping has also been a big part of me trying to feel secure in a place. I'm learning to be okay with emptiness on a map, or emptiness on my map. It's very much connected to like my anxiousness. I'm getting personally getting better at not being able to see the map and trust in the emptiness, but if there's too much stuff that I can't see, then I'm just gonna like, oh god. Starbucks. Starbucks is over here. Put it up here. My boyfriend's house. My boyfriend. We've got five minutes. Anyone else looking up? This is, a, this is exactly, this is perfect and messy and chaotic and wild and that's okay. It doesn't really like, it's hard to understand, it doesn't make sense, it's hard to read, but it still kind of functions. Doesn't it look good? Yeah. I think it looks good. Places are messy. Community is a messy thing to be, you know? The block is kind of um, where kids of color live and I think has like a lot of different connotations to people. Like some people may fear it and some people love it because it's home. As their teacher, I'm hoping that they see their connections to one another. So students who may in fact feel isolated or feel that they haven't found their place, they can realize they actually have a lot of connections in a lot of different places and spaces. I think for a lot of our students, they don't value Austin until they leave it. It all happened for a reason. That's again trust in the map that was made, the map that came up, you know. It wasn't the map that I could have ever drawn, but it was the map that's for me, and now I live a really beautiful life because of that map, so it's cool. That classroom made me at home. <laughs>